What's up YouTube? Check out what came in the mail today and uh, it happens to be a package from NGC. I finally received the bulk of my submission back from grading. I still have one more set left, the pandas which are still being conserved, the, the silver pandas if you recall. Uh, they got back, backlogged but hopefully they'll be done soon. In this batch I finally get the grades on my pre-33 gold. Now that's been an Achilles to my grading capabilities but uh, you know you gotta keep on practicing and keep on buying and I gotta say this one was pretty similar to the last one. I didn't do as great as I thought I would so it looks like my first uh, MS-64 was beginner's luck. But overall everything kind of averaged out however like I mentioned in the last video I think I'll be taking a break because my my I've been buying too much and choosing quantity over quality and uh, I've been running into a little bit of a problem and uh, I should be taking my time however if I do spot some deals better believe I'm gonna pull the trigger I'm just not gonna rush into uh, certain areas that I am not experienced with which is kinda what I did with uh, the gold Indians so in a way it was a gamble I knew it was a gamble and uh, luckily I didn't lose too much but I did lose a little bit of confidence as you can see there's several coins in this submission and there's a lot of slabs and I think I'm going to readjust my strategy a bit to focus less on uh, grading and get back to choosing quality coins because I kinda went a little overboard and it's one of those things where you gotta know when to hold them and when to fold them. So let's get started. First up is a 50 cent Franklin. It came back MS64, full bell lines on the back and Bugs Bunny variety. So it's a double die on the Franklin. I was hoping for a 65 but uh, I kinda expected a 64. Moving on to the Mercury Dimes, which came back SP70. Out of seven submitted, I got six out of seven SP70s, which is a great ratio, and then ultimately it improved the value quite a bit and uh, backfilled some of my losses on the pre-33. But hopefully in time, if spot increases, then that'll be a wash and all of it goes up anyway. So this is the 69, the only 69 that I got. And if you were able to see the deal from Silvertown, they were offering the SP70 for 260. My, what a difference a month makes. It went from 399 down to 260. We'll see if they're all absorbed because at 260, over 200 of those uh, SP70s were sold. So most likely they'll eventually reestablish a bottom line price and hopefully move from there. I don't believe the price will continue to track down below issue price for SP70s. I do think that they'll maintain their price point at some level and then start to move up. But we'll see in uh, due time. It depends on what the quarters do and the walkers, which I can't wait for. Now into pre-33. First up, a rather surprise, interesting surprise, the 1914D AU55. According to price guide, this one is 370, but we all know it's always a little under. But uh, thankfully, I thought all of the two and a half quarter dollar Indians were going to be AU details, and luckily this came back AU 55. So this one brought a few dollars back from the losses for the other coins. And uh, here is the 1914 D, which came back AU details as expected. Uh, not too much of a surprise. I just wanted to make sure that they were genuine and real, which is why I sent in these coins. The 1911 AU details. Now this one was a big disappointment. I thought it would be, I was hoping for the 1911 week D. It had the wire rim perfectly from 12 o'clock to about four o'clock, but uh, I guess the people at NGC didn't think so and at least it's authenticated so what can you do uh, this one was an interesting one in the 1925 D this was one of the first ones I picked up uh, through an eBay auction most of the folks thought it would be AU details but it actually came back 
uncirculated details, which uh, is a nice surprise. It helps out. Every little bit helps, and especially being authenticated, because uh, quarter Indians and five dollar Indians are the most counterfeited Indians of the group. Now we move on to the ten dollar Indians, which came back AU fifty five, which is you know respectable. I kind of figured it would come back AU. Uh, mid AU is better than AU details in this respect. So. 1908 motto in AU55. Decent, but uh, ultimately I overpaid. This is one of those lessons learned. You can be sure if I buy Indians again, I'm going to be a little bit more careful. Like this 1909, which came back AU55. It has a very interesting, a, a particular look to it, which I'm going to be looking for on future coins. So even though I overpaid, there's still a way for me to regain that loss with uh, spot increases or if the market demand increases. Next up is the 1910, which came back MX, MS62, which is a nice grade for the coin. Definitely appropriate. Very happy with this one. So, moving on. The 1914D AU details. This one was a disappointing grade because uh, I actually thought this one was going to be better. But luckily I paid less for this one than all of the others. I paid about 630 for this one. So after looking at it carefully compared to the 62, I can see why. It came back AU details, improperly cleaned. And uh, it's just one of those things that you got to keep looking at. Looking at the MS62 and the AU details side by side, I can start seeing clearly why one is different than the other. And uh, I'll start taking notes on that and I'll look at them a little bit more over time. Alright, we've made it around the world to the next set, which happens to be World Coins. And we start off with a submission by our very own Silver Saver. She had sent this coin to me to send in for grading and is the only 3 gram panda that is in the bunch which came back MS-69. Unfortunately, she did not get a 70. But uh, this will be going back to you soon, so keep an eye out for that one. Next up is a 2014 Ukraine Archangel, MS-69. A decent grade. Hopefully all coins should come back like this. But you'll soon see that certain quality standards doesn't always make it, like this 2015 which came back MS-68. There's a little bit of a rub mark. I had never opened the cap capsule. I contacted the seller who also didn't open the capsule. It's just one of those things. Certain mints are better than others. And in this case, the 2013 also came back MS-68. This one had a little bit of a scratch on the shield. And the 2012, which came back bent. Ah. This is utterly disappointing. This is failure. But luckily I paid a little bit of a premium for this one, not too much of a premium. Uh, so I at least have the melt value and a nice coin. That'll come out. But uh, moving on to my bread and butter, a 1983 G10Y Gold Panda, which came back MS69. So this one recouped pretty much all the losses on the Archangels by itself because of the buy price and ultimately why I'm considering sticking to my bread and butter because I can identify better coins. Same with this 2012 I'd gotten on a auction which I know when coins are undervalued I can look at them a bit better. To round out this bunch is a 2014 Koala Privy which uh, is pretty limited, so I thought I'd slab a couple. I didn't really add value to this one, but I didn't really lose any value either. So, these are just nice to have. Not really intending to do much with these. But, moving along. The one gram pandas, I'd sent in three, and all three came back MS-70s. Which, also, was a nice little surprise, but not because so many people got 70s for their 1 grams. 
Now for the final two, and most likely, as far as I can tell, the only two graded one quarter Queen's Beasts, which came back MS69. As far as I can tell, there's no census for these just yet, so most likely there aren't any other ones available. The second and final Queen's Beast came back MS69. So if you're able to find these in MS70, you'll have a very rare grade for a already hard to find new issue modern coin. I gotta say, this is a, uh, I'm still happy with the grade. I, I can't be too disappointed. It's hard to get with limited supply, so you can only grade what you can get your hands on. So as mentioned earlier, I had sacrificed some quality in order to buy quantity. And this is where I made a bit of a calculated risk and I ended up losing on this one because the risk I took was one to try to get rarer coins or hard to find coins like the $10 Indians and the quarter Indians which are limited in supply and hard to find in good dates that already aren't already graded. So when purchasing raw, this is kind of the risk you take between modern and pre-33. The main lesson that I learned from this experience is I got a little too deep with a subject that I didn't really get too familiar enough with. I started buying coins too great, just too great. And I think Numistacker echoed this in a few of his videos a few months ago that it's good to be picky when sending items in for grading. Not all the coins are going to come back the, the way or the grade that you want them or expect them to be. It also gets very costly very fast if you end up sending in coins that don't make the grade. So you have to be very specific in order to get uh, the kind of coins and the kind of return on investment that would make it worthwhile to send in coins for grading. So for now, I'm going to take a step back from grading and then just pick up some coins that tickle my fancy or I can find at good deals and enjoy it. So if you like, please comment, like, and subscribe, and hope to see you on the next video.